Let's continue our discussion with the class E amplifiers. Now, uh, if you recall, we have talked about uh, class C amplifiers and class D amplifiers. Uh, all of these uh, three classes, class C, class D, class E, are, if you recall, they are nonlinear and uh, they're all about high efficiency. So, for example, uh, an operation of class C with a, with a vacuum tube is still being largely used as a as in AM and FM transmitters. So a typical, for example, uh, AM transmission might require a power of two megawatt, uh, but <clears throat> with a single large vacuum tube operation where uh, in, uh, in place of uh, JFET or a BJT, you are using a vacuum tube with a class C amplifier, which can reach a maximum efficiency of uh, eta for class C. You can reach a maximum efficiency of 85%. Uh, you can still produce a, a power in, in excess of 6 megawatts, okay? So class C amplifiers are still being widely used for AM and FM transmitters. Uh, in uh, class D and uh, class E uh, amplifiers, you can you can reach efficiencies of, for example, in class D, class C in theoretical efficiency of 100%, okay? So class D and class E are very close efficiencies. And... Uh, their, uh, their their efficiency is better than uh, class C amplifiers, and they are they are used both class D and class E are used in applications like industrial heating, like curing of plywoods, and uh, in applications where you you require to save the electricity bill. For example, in or or or, or, or even if uh, on a on a on a small scale, like cellular uh, transmitters in mobile phones. Uh, you have those class uh, D and D amplifiers for 100% efficiency where you are going to uh, reduce the battery life of your uh, mobile device. You use class D and class E amplifiers. Basically, they, uh, class C or class D and class E, uh, since they are all about efficiency, they are used in transmitters, in phase modulations, in pulse modulations. So basically, they can generate any arbitrary output waveforms. Okay, So they are all about uh, efficiency. Now, um, class E amplifiers uh, is no different. Um, it's a nonlinear, again, a nonlinear amplifier. But the advantage of class E over class C and class D is you, you recall that in class C we have a we have a, a single JFET, okay, and uh, which we use as a switch in saturation state along with the flywheel LCR circuit. Uh, but the efficiency was maximum efficiency was around 90 percent, 85 percent. Uh, class D is efficiency approach 100%, but then uh, we use two switches, two JFET. So uh, class C amplifier is built with a single transistor, having a higher efficiency than linear class uh, power amplifiers, class B and class A, B amplifiers, for example, class A amplifiers. Okay, so class C uses a single transistor, but class D, on the other hand, to achieve 100% efficiency, require in principle, in principle, for 100% efficiency, it requires Two transistors. Okay, so now if you look at the figure of uh, class E amplifier, uh, class E amplifier has both of these virtues. Okay, so it uses a single transistor, and it can achieve an efficiency of 100%. Uh, so once again over here, if you look in the schematic, uh, you see you have a you have an RF choke. Okay, and uh, you have a switch. So for example, over here the drain is connected uh, to the power supply through an inductor. Which has a which has a large inductance. Okay, so you recall that the inductance of an inductor X of L is given as is given as J mega L. Okay, and uh, at DC at DC when omega is zero, so at DC when omega is equal to zero, this is zero. So which means that the inductor is short. It's a short circuit. Uh, so basically. Uh, your drain voltage VDD is VDD is uh, VDC over here. Okay, so drain voltage is VDC. And similarly, similarly, your uh, drain current, which is coming from the, uh, which is being supplied through the choke, which is an additional element to the drain of the JFET. If we call this as ID, okay, uh, ID has a very small AC experience, okay. The AC component of uh, uh, ID is small. Why it's small? Because this is an RF choke, which chokes any uh, AC or RF signals. So, 
um, the AC component, AC component of ID is small because of the RF choke connected. So AC component, AC component of uh, ID is small. Okay, AC component of ID is almost zero. It is choked by the by a very large inductor. That's why it's called RF choke. Uh, but still, you see, if you are going to use this as a switch. Uh, which means that at this node, the equivalent circuit can be drawn like if you consider a very small resistance on the resistance for the JFET, and there you have a switch. Okay, so this is a, basically a small resistance R, which is again much, much less than the load resistance RL. Okay, um, RL, and this is your ground. So you see over here if R is small, and if the switch closes, at the instant when the switch closes, uh, it basically shorts out this capacitor C1, okay? And uh, when it shorts out this capacitor C1, uh, you have a node voltage over here, zero. Okay? This node voltage is almost zero. So if you call this V1 of T, at the instant when the JFET is on or when the switch is on, this goes to zero, okay? This is zero. The transistor is only uh, either fully on or either fully off. So when the switch closes, you have the capacitor shorted out and all the current flows. So in, in that sense, in that sense, the supply basically pumps the energy. Supply pumps the energy into the RF choke during the period when the when the switch is closed. Okay. Now, <coughs> when the uh, switch opens, at the instant when the switch opens, what happens is the energy stored in the choke. Is supplied to the rest of the circuit okay so for example you don't have anything over here it's an open circuit and uh, at the instant when the when the switch is open the energy is supplied from the choke RF choke to the rest of the circuit okay rest of the LCR circuit over here so let's look in detail what, what is going on over here okay so you see the transistor that we are using over here in class E amplifier is used as a switch. First of all, this is a switch in saturation region. It is either fully on or it is fully off. Okay, so an equivalent circuit is shown below. The transistor is represented as a switch. Now, the switch operates with a 50% duty factor. So the voltage at the switch V1 over here, this is the voltage V1, is forced to be zero for a half cycle or almost zero if you consider the switch to have a very small resistance. So if this R is small, this R is this R is, is small, you consider this to be a very small on the resistance, okay? And then this, this is a 50% duty cycle. For example, if this is a period T, okay? And this period is T by two, okay? Half period, 50% duty cycle. And this period, the transistor is, let's say, on. Now this, 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 this is the time period when the switch is off, okay, and so on and so forth. This, this trend continues, okay. Now, if you uh, relate this uh, switching with the node voltage V1, so what, what we have discussed is that when, when the switch is on and this R is small, so in this part of the um, uh, voltage cycles at the node V1, this is my node V1, okay, as a function of time, as you can see that the transistor is on over here, okay. The switch is closed, so the transistor is on. The transistor is on. We are basically shorting out the capacitor C1. Okay, so it is grounded over here. So in half of the cycle, in half of the cycle, 50% about almost 50% duty factor. Uh, the voltage V1 is zero. Okay, the voltage V1 is zero for half the cycle. So when the transistor is on, you have uh, zero. Uh, zero node voltage V1, okay? In between, what happens is that, now since uh, if, if you consider the the DC part of the circuit, when the switch is, um, okay, when the switch is off, well, the DC is already set at VDC, why? Because you have, you have, you have clamped this uh, output of V1 uh, at VDC, okay? Because uh, the inductor is short, there is no DC drop at the inductor. The inductor is short, so this VDC is connected over here. So we, you have a you have a DC component, okay, VDC, which you can see over here at the output uh, of the node voltage V1. 
So during the other half cycle, V1T consists of rounded positive pulses. So what is going on is that once this switch is off, okay, so in this in this part, and the switch is off, the transistor is not conducting. So the transistor is off over here. We have rounded pulses, okay, and uh, the average amplitude, for example, over here, this is also off. Uh, the maximum amplitude that you can have when the transistor is off, the maximum amplitude of V1T at the node C1, where the capacitor C1 is connected, this amplitude maximum peak is around 2 VDC. Okay, and why is that? Because uh, since the waveform is clamped at VDC, the waveform is clamped at uh, VDC, the energy that is being provided by the choke is almost the same as the supply which because the, the choke is pumping energy, jump choke is pumping energy in the circuit, in the circuit when the transistor is is off, the transistor is not conducting, transistor the switch is off. Okay. And this energy is again the, the supply energy, okay, almost VDC. So the average amplitude is VDC, two twice VDC, okay, twice VDC over a DC of over off, offset of VDC. Right? So uh, it says over here, the, the choke and the switch, they, they form a, a flyback circuit. Okay, what is a flyback circuit? What happens is um, the power supply pumps the energy into the inductor when the switch is closed. So when the switch is closed, the resistance is negligible. You're shorting out the capacitor. So the you, uh, when once the capacitor is shorted out, you cannot supply anything to the, to the rest of the LCR circuit, the series LCR circuit. So what happens is that the supply pumps the energy into the inductor. So the inductor uh, stores the energy into its magnetic field. And once the switch opens, once the switch is open, okay, uh, the inductor pumps the energy into the rest of the circuit. So while the switch is open, the inductor is pumping the energy into the circuit. And with a offset of VDC, now this pumping of energy is again proportional to the supply voltage VDC. So you have maximum amplitude of to VDC and that is the region when the transistor is off, okay? Uh, and what happens next is that you have a LCR circuit. So once again, if you are going to set your resonance, which is going to be set or dictated by the uh, the interaction, by, through the interaction of uh, inductor L2 and capacitor C2. So you have a series resonance of L2 uh, treated by 1 over uh, 2 pi under root L2 C2. So whatever this frequency is, it's going to favor this frequency. Okay, so you can see there is a harmonic content that is coming at V1. Okay, you look at this pulsating voltage. It's not a sinusoid. It looks like a sinusoid, but then again, there are rounded pulses for half of the duty cycle where the, where the switch is off. Okay, when the transistor is conducting, this is on. Uh, V1 is zero. Okay. So first of all, the C2 also acts as a coupling capacitor, so you don't have any DC over here at the output. It is extracted. It's a coupling capacitor, so you don't have any DC. But then uh, whatever the frequency is, uh, you are going to band pass the filter. You are going to band pass the uh, V1 uh, voltage to produce a, a tone signal having the frequency of uh, F resonance, okay, which is the series resonance of the uh, series RLC circuit. Uh, so since there cannot be any DC drop, basically this is again the operation of class uh, E amplifier explained. You can see that the pulses uh, V1T at the switch must have an average amplitude equal to the twice of the power supply voltage. So um, you see again this is twice VDC because you are pumping energy from the inductor. When the transistor is off, when the transistor is off, you are going to pump the energy from the inductor into the circuit. And this energy is, again, through the supply VDC over an offset of VDC. So you have twice uh, the amplitude of the supply voltage. The key to the efficiency of this circuit is that it can be designed so that the voltage V1T has fallen to zero at precisely the instance the switch closes. Okay, so there's an advantage over here. You see, for example, now this C1, this even also includes uh, the uh, transistor capacitance, CDS, the drain to source capacitance. So a transistor has an inherent drain to source capacitance, parasitic capacitance, which otherwise affects the operation, for example, of a class D amplifier in series operation, if you have seen 
and that's due to the the switching cycle so for example the, the loss due to the parasitic capacitances cds uh, v square for example if you call this v1 square over here or half v1 square okay multiply by f which is your switching cycle of the transistor this loss is not happening okay so you don't have this loss in uh, class e amplifier just like uh, what we encountered in class d amplifier why because once the um, once the switch is closed your c1 is shorted out so v1 is zero so it does not get time for an abrupt discharge okay so if you consider c1 which includes in c1 is in parallel with cds so c1 if you assume over here c1 includes cds the effect of cds if this capacitor is shorted, if this capacitor is shorted out, there is no, uh, uh, the V1 is zero, so V1 is zero. You don't have any loss in class E amplifiers due to the abrupt discharging of the capacitor once the switch opens. Okay, once the switch opens at, 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 at the instant, you see at the instant when, uh, at this instant, for example, when V is zero, when V1 is zero over here. Uh, so over here, uh, the transistor is conducting, and uh, to understood uh, the, the switch opens and the choke provides energy to the circuit at this instant v1 is still zero v1 is still zero okay you have v1 is still zero uh, so they, they, there's no discharge uh, because of the parasitic capacitance of the uh, jfat so the capacitor v1 is shorted out uh, without uh, a sudden lossy discharge you don't know that c1 includes the transistor's parasitic capacitance so you don't have any loss due to the uh, transistor's parasitic capacitance drain to source parasitic capacitance the rf choke uh, l1 is uh, large enough to uh, ensure that the dc supply current idc is essentially no ac component okay because inductance is large so the inductor current increases and decreases during the flyback cycles are much smaller than the average DC component. So I've already said that the AC component of uh, ID is very small, okay, because this is an RF choke, okay. So basically it is it is supplying energy once the transistor is not conducting and it uh, it, uh, rest it it restores energy once the capacitor C1 is shorted, okay. So either it will supply energy to the circuit, it will supply the energy to the circuit, I, or it will store the energy into its magnetic field once the transistor is conducting and, and it has shorted out C1, okay, so it will it will pump again, it will pump the energy once the transistor is off. So you can see it is supplying the pulsating voltage at V1. That explains the behavior of the V1 over here. Um, a simplified description is again is as follows: the pulses at C1 are not square, but they have an average voltage of 2 VDC. The waveform is a rough approximation to a sine wave, but it's not a sine wave; it's a pulsating. Uh, wave with a peak voltage of uh, VDC plus an offset, which is an equal uh, DC offset. So equal DC offset, 2 VDC to become 2 VDC. Next is the bandpass filter, which is formed by L2 and C2. Again, is a coupling capacitor. So due to the interaction of L2 and C2, you will have a good sine wave to the load R. So that, that, that's the basic uh, operation of uh, class uh, E amplifier. Okay.